Well, welcome back. The changing face of energy, electric utility company First Energy, launching a $500 million grid modernization program to enhance the flow of electricity across the region. It is expected to benefit more than 1 million customers and will incorporate innovative smart technology to help cut the frequency and duration of power outages. Joining us right now is the CEO of First Energy, Charles Jones. And Charles, it is good to see you this morning. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I want me. to get to the modernization plan and find out really what it means. But first, let me get your 30,000 feet uh, expectation of where we are in this economy because in, in order for First Energy to grow, you want to see a, a, a growth backdrop in the economy. And there's a bit of a debate on where we are right now. How do you see things? I think the economy is doing well. And I tell people that at First Energy, we monitor 6 million economic indicators every month called electric meters, how fast they're spinning, how many new meters we're connecting to our system as a proxy for how the economy is doing. And we're starting to see that growth come into our five-state region. That's a very good proxy because with economic growth, those meters are going faster and, and moving and there's more activity. Yes, yes. So, so tell us about the modernization plan. You've been working on this, investing in the grid uh, for several years now. Where are you in the process? So we've been investing in our transmission infrastructure now for five years, uh, a little over a billion dollars a year for the last five years. This $500 million program that we just announced is in Ohio and it's down at the lower voltages, the distribution level, and it's all designed to make the grid more resilient, uh, add some automation to it, make it so that it responds when, when there are outages automatically instead of us having to send crews out to put the power back on. And this is a big security issue as well. This, this, this grid has to be secure. Yes. H tell us about that. You have yes. confidence in that? I do. I do. And uh, our entire industry is focused on security from both a cyber perspective and from a physical perspective. And we're spending tens of millions of dollars every year at First Energy to make sure that we identify threats and we're protecting our customers from those threats. The company recently announced plans to use savings from the Trump administration's tax cuts and Jobs Act to return $900 million to customers. You're also the savings to your plans to the upgraded technology in your electric distribution grids. Talk about that and the effects you've seen from tax reform. Well, in our business, taxes are something that are included in our customers rates. So when the federal government cut the taxes for our company, those are fairly due back to customers. So we worked with all of the regulatory commissions in all five states that we serve and also the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission to make sure that those savings flow back to our customers and lower their bills. And was it very significant in terms of the impact on First Energy? Well, $900 million is yeah. significant, but, but it was not significant in terms of the impact on our company because they're dollars we're collecting from customers anyway. So if we don't have to pay them in taxes, we give them back to the customers. Got it. Good. Okay. Now, you're using drones to help save wildlife. Tell us about this. How important is technology, and, and how have you changed your business model based on technology and how you can use it differently? Technology is impacting every industry, and, and ours is, is the same. We use drones to do aerial patrols and check for damage in, for example, after a storm like last night. Uh, you know, this is a type of event with leaves still on the trees and you get snow this early in November. We had a number of outages. We can use drones now to patrol and identify and do the, do the advance work so that our crews know what material they need to put the power back on when they get there. And, and how significant was, for example, yesterday's incident? I mean, I, you know, just anecdotally going around the neighborhoods, there were a lot of trees down. So in the area we serve, we had 200,000 customer outages. Our crews work through the night. They have power restored to more than half of those already, and we expect to have most of them back on by the end of today. Wow, great, Charles. Everybody wants to hear that, that's for sure. Good to have you on the program this morning. Thanks so much. Okay, thank Charles you. Charles Jones joining us.